I am Tucker Schultes. I am the presidential candidate for Student Association. I am the president of Enactus and the president of Community Services, as well as the treasurer of one at SUNY Oswego. I'm Nina Lawfer. I'm a freshman and I am vice presidential candidate. I am currently a senator and also the pro temp for Senate. All right, Tucker, we'll start with you. All right. 8,000 plus students on campus and um, off campus. Why is there only one presidential candidate? Well, that's a uh, that's an interesting question, and I wonder the same thing. Uh, I think it's an issue where a lot of students that want to be involved are already involved by the time they are prepared enough to become president of SA. I mean, personally for me, uh, the reason why I'm in this position right now is because I was able to figure out leadership position changes to lead to an easy transition for me out of those positions. So I think it's an issue where there are a lot of student leaders who are already president of an organization and they don't want to leave the organization that they've helped build up. So I think that's one of the issues. Do you think the, the process for acquiring the candidacy, you need the recommendations and you need the 500 signatures in the student body in a very short period of time, do you think that's also a deterrent for some students on their own? Because there is a, a large Senate, correct? Mm -hmm. um, but this, uh, yeah, I, uh, I think five. I mean, personally, for me, five hundred signatures. It was a, uh, it was a little tough at first, but it just got rolling. Got to the point where I was just knocking on every single door in Onondaga and bothering all the suites. But I think it's a little much, especially because you probably will not see five hundred people vote. So I think it's a little weird and kind of strange that you would require more signatures than the voting turnouts are going to be. I don't think there's too many situations in politics where you'll have a situation like that. Um, but at the same time, I think if you were to lower it, you're also going to get um, less qualified applicants. Um, if it was only 100, you might end up getting 10 people, but then you run the risk of having someone get into office who is not prepared, might just be doing it to build their resume, and that's also a problem you don't want to have. So I think there's a fine line between getting a lot of candidates, but also getting the right candidates. Do you think that um, playing into this 8,000 students, one candidate, do you think it's a lack of knowledge over what SA actually does, or do you think students are apathetic about SA, like, what are they going to do for me, why should I go? I think it's a little bit of both. I think a lot of students just don't care. I have a lot of friends who they just don't want to be a part of any organizations. They're here to get their degree and leave. And that's fine. It's not for everyone. But then I also think the other half just doesn't really understand the whole thing. They, they look at SA as kind of an evil empire that they have to cooperate with to get money. And that's something that needs to be changed on campus. And uh, Students need to realize that SA can do a lot more than just offer things to the organizations. So I think that's one of the other things is getting more students involved that have different backgrounds. It seems like most of the people within SA are either political science majors or they are very political people. And there needs to be some way to get a variety of people in there that aren't just in it kind of for the political part of it, but are actually in it to make a difference. And I think that's also important. This one's kind of for both of you. Do you think having a required representative from each degree field in SA would be beneficial for the organization, or do you think that just kind of add to the clutter? Uh, I think so. I mean, right now it's by building, and like, I think that's harder than if you do by major because there's so many people in each major that will probably want to get involved over each building. Yeah, I, I think that'd be I think it'd be a good idea if you were to make there be a representative of each school. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the School of Business has a student advisory council. I think it makes sense to have the CEO of the Student Advisory Council also have a role within SA to be able to convey all the information because I think there's a big disconnect between what's going on within all the departments in the administration and then what's going on with all the student organizations. Because when I go to meetings for both sides, I often will inform people, I will often inform administrators of things that they have no clue that's going on because there's just, there's not a connection between the two halves. Neely, you're a freshman. Do you think this lack of experience in the college setting is going to help you or hurt you going um, into the vice president? Well, I mean, I, I mean, the major thing of me vi being vice president is I run the Senate meetings. And I've, I mean, I've only had one semester in Senate, but I've done a lot in Senate. So I think that I have more experience than someone who 
you know, is an upperclassman and comes in with no Senate experience and tries running Senate. Do you think it's beneficial that as vice president your sophomore year, you're going to see these ideas that you and Tucker are coming up with actually come to fruition in the school in your junior and senior year? Yeah, definitely. I think that if I start now in my sophomore year, I can make more happen by my senior year because I'll have more experience than most people. Are you allowed to run for presidency after vice presidency? Um, I want to, <laughs> yeah. All right, this one's awesome for the both of you. The SAP, huge deal this year. There's a lot of students voicing their opinions whether they, it should be required by the tuition fees or it shouldn't. Um, what is your thoughts, or what are your thoughts on the SAP? Should it be, is it okay where it is now? Should it be raised, should it be mandatory? Start with Tucker. All right. <laughs> Um, as far as raising it, I think it's imperative that we raise it. Um, as I've said before, since I've come to this college, there's been about 40 new student organizations. But our student population hasn't really grown at all. So doing a simple analysis of the economics at play here, in a few years if we keep getting more and more organizations but the student body stays at the same level with the same fee being paid, all the organizations are going to have less funds to pull from. And I believe that that would lead to a situation where you'd see a lot of organizations start to crumble. And during a period where they should all be growing, but it's very hard to grow your organization when your funds keep getting depleted because there's more places to spread it around to. So I think it's very, um, it's very important that we find a way to get the fee to keep increasing every year, especially since we're not even close to the maximum that you can have for the fee. Uh, well, I think a lot of people who don't know who it is think, oh, well, it's a fee, you know, that I can choose not to have. And I think people don't realize how much, like, it will take away if we don't have it. I mean, not even with clubs and organizations, but Centro is a huge thing that pays for it. We have contracts with them that go through the $97 fee and buses to and from Syracuse to get people home for the holidays and whenever they need to go home. So I think that it, people need to realize that it's not just a fee that they're paying for clubs, even though they're not involved in clubs. It pays for a lot more. So the lack of knowledge about the SAP kind of plays into yeah, why people yeah. are opposing it. And that goes back to the lack of knowledge about SA and the lack of candidacy for the top positions in SA, mm -hmm. seemingly a very important position yeah. in the school, if not the most important position of the student body. What are your plans to get the word out about SA next year as president and vice president so more people are running, more people care about it, and you won't have uh, two straight years now that uh, the presidency has been run unopposed? What are your plans to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Oh, we talked about it before, that we would go building a building and talk to hall councils and get them more involved because they're a direct link to the buildings to campus. Yeah, beyond that, um, I'm working on, actually today I was just talking to some different communications professors, and I'm working on having there be a director of public relations, an assistant director of public relations, and a graphic design assistant director that would ultimately be able to help just kind of change the whole image of SA and hopefully get us to be more of a positive light in the student body. You think adding more positions to SA will broaden the scope of uh, interest for certain students? I, I think having PR positions is very important to find a way to rebrand the image of it because since I've been on campus I've never really heard too much or seen too much about SA other than when it's important, like you'll hear about when the votes are, you'll hear about individual things, but you'll never really see a campaign that's just what SA is in general. So I think that'd be very important to help change the image to ultimately get there to be more candidates. There's very young Senate this year, correct? A lot of freshmen, a lot of underclassmen. Do you, how important is it for these younger students to become involved in such an organization? at their freshman, sophomore years, rather than wait till their junior, senior years to start getting involved, where there's less time to really build their repertoire? Uh, I think it builds a lot of passion in them. I mean, I started as a freshman, and now I can go through my four years in Senate and gain more knowledge and more experience. And the freshmen we have now, you know, they might be freshmen and they might be young, but they have a lot of passion to Senate, and I know that they want to continue in Senate. Do you think this young Senate that you have now, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, you think that because there are so many members that are young, the elections will be more competitive in the future years. I think that's hard to say. My worry would be 
keeping their interests so you don't get senators that leapfrog from SA to then go run other student organizations. I think that's a, a risk that's definitely at hand. What do you think you can do to make sure that their interests stay in SA, or not necessarily stay in SA, where they can, they can branch off to other clubs or other organizations, but keep them in SA rather than, you know, switch from one organization to another, rather just have two organizations? Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to find ways to get them in contact with people who can help them get things done. I, this is probably a better question for Neely, but from an outsider's point of view, it appears as if there are some senators that just come to Senate but don't really do too much outside of Senate. I understand Neely's written most of the bills, so it would be finding some way to get these senators very passionate about issues on campus and to get them just passionate about making a difference on campus, because I think once they realize that there are other organizations and that they could be a lot more involved in a different organization, that's when you run the risk of them leaving us. Say. Um, I mean, some of the centers we do have, though, most of them want to be involved in the, well, in SA. I mean, I, my ultimate goal is to have senators be more on campus and more involved in clubs and be involved in SA so they have a broader spectrum. But right now, the centers we have, you know, they want leadership roles. You know, there's, you know, we have chairs and we have, you know, directors. And I think, you know, moving forward, they all want to take those leadership roles now that they see it's possible. A couple more. Um... Tucker. You're the president of Enactus, president of Community Services. Mm -hmm. No essay experience coming in. What are your duties at Enactus and Community Services, and how are you going to gather those together to make your presidency more reflective of your duties as an administrator of these other organizations? I'll try and make this brief. Um, for Enactus, I kind of play a liaison between the members of Enactus and the community. Um, Enactus is a international nonprofit business organization that believes in using the business concepts that are learned in the classroom and applying them to community members in need in an entrepreneurial way. So I go out in the community and I find different businesses that are in need, businesses that need consulting help, marketing help. They might need a new coat of paint, but they just don't have the resources to make these things happen. So I meet very often with the mayor and different representatives within the community. Um, so that's kind of what I do on that end. And then on the community service end, it's a lot of the same stuff, meeting with people, finding different events to create, planning different events for the students to participate in, getting more students involved in service activities, leading trips. So I believe the experiences from those two, um, I have a lot of experience in getting in contact with people. That's kind of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is make new connections. So I think that'll be very beneficial for the role of president and uh, I'm beneficial enough to have Neely on my side to kind of teach me the ways of SA, which is where I lack within the role. All right, the last one, and this was the last question last night. Um, what do you want your legacy to be when you leave here? Start with Neely. Um, I mean, I've said before a lot that I want senators to be more involved in campus, so, you know, when I leave office as vice president, that I want, you know, senators to be involved in other clubs and when we ever, you know, I think that when we fund events that we should go to those events that we fund because, you know, SA should make more of a presence and not just be a bank. Your legacy, Tucker. Along the same lines, I want my legacy to be that I had a presence, that people knew who I was and that I made um, meaningful changes on campus. I think that's another benefit of having Neely only be a freshman right now is that hopefully some of the initiatives that we start can be carried on by her after I graduate. And that's very exciting because I've often heard from past presidents that they'll have an initiative that'll ultimately end up just dying when they graduate.